Aircraft carriers are the world's largest ships in the U.S. Navy. And these are the guns on the ships. Why are they so small? When you look at Russia's aircraft carriers, they have much larger guns on their ships. The modern aircraft carriers of the U.S. Navy are equipped with relatively small cannons in proportion to their size and capabilities. The reasons the cannons are so small is not what most people think. In the bygone eras of naval warfare, aircraft carriers themselves were potent warships, bristling with significant gun batteries. A prime example is the legendary USS Enterprise, which served with distinction in World War II. However, the landscape of naval combat has undergone a profound transformation. Advances in missile technology, anti-ship weaponry, and aircraft capabilities have completely reshaped the way battles are fought at sea. Guided missiles now far surpass the traditional naval gun in both range and destructive potential. As a result, modern aircraft carriers place their trust in a different kind of arsenal for self-defense their own air wings. Carriers launch fighters to establish dominance in the skies and utilize sophisticated air defense systems to neutralize incoming threats long before they get close. This evolution doesn't mean that carriers are entirely without guns. However, their role has changed significantly. Modern carriers still house smaller caliber guns, typically rapid fire cannons ranging from 20 millimeter to 57 mm. These aren't the primary offensive punch of a bygone era. They are instead focused squarely on close in defense. They act as the carrier's last resort, a final protective shield against threats like small, fast attack boats, low flying aircraft, or any incoming missiles that breach the outer defense layers. The shift away from large caliber guns reflects the changing nature of threats and the increased reliance on aircraft and missiles. Guns once intended to duel with enemy warships are now specialized tools. They are designed for the specific challenges of the modern battle space, providing point defense as part of a multi-layered integrated defense network built around the potential capabilities of the carrier's embarked air wing. The rise of long-range precision-guided missiles stands as one of the most transformative developments in modern naval warfare, and a key reason behind the downsizing of guns on aircraft carriers. These missiles fundamentally altered the nature of naval combat by dramatically extending a carrier's reach and striking power. Traditional naval guns were powerful, but limited to their effective range. In contrast, Modern missiles can accurately engage targets hundreds of miles away. This revolutionary capability allows carriers to project power while maintaining a much safer standoff distance. It reduces their vulnerability and shifts the focus away from direct ship-to-ship -ship battles where close-range guns would be a primary asset. Equally important is precision. Missiles leverage GPS, laser guidance, and other advanced targeting technologies to achieve pinpoint accuracy. This minimizes the risk of collateral damage and empowers carriers to surgically strike specific threats with a broader combat zone. The alternative, large guns firing unguided shells, pales in comparison, both in terms of precision and the potential for unintended consequences. Furthermore, missiles carry significantly larger warheads than traditional naval shells. This makes them far more lethal, especially against heavily armored ships or fortified land-based targets. They deliver a devastating blow that the guns of previous eras simply couldn't match. The combination of range, accuracy, and destructive power was a game changer. Missiles also allow carriers to strike with devastating effect from further away, precisely targeting the intended objective. These advantages outweighed the need for larger caliber, close-range guns designed for a different style of warfare. While carriers retain guns for specific defensive roles, their primary offensive power now lies in their ability to launch waves of missile-armed aircraft that fundamentally altered the naval battlefield. 
Modern aircraft carriers are marvels of engineering. Floating cities, meticulously designed for a singular purpose, to dominate the seas through their ability to project air power. At the core of this mission lies the flight deck, a vast expanse of carefully engineered space vital to the carrier's ability to launch and recover aircraft. In the ever-changing world of naval warfare, speed, efficiency, and adaptability are paramount, and nowhere is this more apparent than the meticulously planned activity on the flight deck. Imagine the flight deck as a bustling airport terminal, only far more complex and confined. Aircraft ranging from nimble fighter jets to lumbering surveillance planes taxi, take off, and land at breakneck pace, guided by precise hand signals from flight deck crews. Large guns with their expansive turrets and the need for wide arcs of fire would be like placing a construction site in the middle of a dance floor. Operational efficiency would plummet as aircraft are forced to navigate around the gun's bulk, reducing the number of planes that can be housed and creating a dangerous bottleneck of potential collisions. The sheer size of these weapons would fundamentally alter the carrier's silhouette. Think of the difference between a sleek, aerodynamic sports car and a bulky cargo truck. The truck, while powerful, sacrifices speed and maneuverability for sheer muscle. Similarly, large guns would compromise the carrier's agility on the ocean, necessitating complex design compromises to maintain the ship's stability and balance. The weight of additional armor required to protect these guns would further compound the problem. Historical examples reinforce this point. Battleships of World War II, such as the Iowa class, were built around their massive guns. The ship's entire design revolved around these colossal weapons, often at the expense of their other capabilities. In the world of modern aircraft carriers, such compromises are unacceptable. The carrier's value lies foremost in its ability to rapidly deploy its air wing, not solely on its own firepower. Instead, modern aircraft carriers prioritize smaller, more versatile weapon systems. Close-in weapon systems like the Phalanx with their rapid-fire radar-guided cannons provide a robust last-resort defense against aircraft and incoming missiles. These compact systems are strategically positioned around the ship's superstructure, causing minimal disruption to flight operations. Crucially, they free up the flight deck to serve its paramount function, launching and recovering aircraft at maximum efficiency. This design philosophy aligns with the realities of modern naval combat. While large guns might have a role in limited shore bombardment missions, the primary threats to an aircraft carrier Come from the sky and the sea, supersonic missiles and stealthy submarines. Investing heavily in countermeasures against these threats, along with the continued ability to deploy a powerful air wing, is the strategy that maximizes a carrier's effectiveness. In essence, the modern aircraft carrier is analogous to an archer rather than a heavyweight boxer. It relies on precision strikes over brute force ensuring that it can maintain a rapid tempo of operations to overwhelm an adversary. Large caliber guns, by their very nature, would diminish this tactical flexibility, making the carrier a less adaptable and less potent tool in the unpredictable landscape of modern naval warfare. The Price Tag In the world of modern naval warfare, the larger caliber guns that once symbolized the might of aircraft carriers have steadily declined in significance. Maybe the most important factor driving this shift is the enormous financial burden associated with such weapons. Aircraft carriers are incredibly complex feats of engineering, with costs reaching astronomical figures. The USS Gerald R. Ford, for example, boasts a price tag of around $13 billion. Consequently, every design element becomes a battle between capability and cost-effectiveness. The expense of larger caliber guns manifests itself at the moment of initial design and manufacture. Their intricate systems demand substantial investments of both time and resources. However, the financial burden extends well beyond production. 
These guns require teams of highly specialized personnel to operate and maintain them, which directly translates to a constant stream of expenses related to training, crew costs, and salaries. Ammunition itself poses another major cost factor. The production, storage, and transport of the massive specialized projectiles demands a significant portion of a carrier's budget, particularly during wartime operations. The most significant ramifications of equipping a carrier with large guns arguably stems from the trade-offs they necessitate. Naval architects grapple with the fundamental limitations of both space and weight when designing these behemoths. Resources devoted to massive guns diminish the potential to incorporate rapidly evolving technologies. Advanced sensors, electronic warfare capabilities, expanded aircraft hangars, or enhanced drone facilities all compete for precious resources. The evolving focus of modern naval combat further calls into question the value of large caliber cannons. Surface-to-surface -surface missile systems, both launched from ships and aircraft, offer increased range and precision, often rendering traditional guns less relevant in direct confrontations. Anti-ship missiles like the American Harpoon or China's YJ-18 pose a grave threat to naval vessels, making investment into countermeasures potentially more strategically sound compared to guns of increasing limited utility. Investing heavily in large caliber weaponry ultimately limits adaptability. In a world of rapidly advancing threats and technologies, aircraft carriers must be designed with modularity and flexibility in mind. Committing vast sums of money and physical resources to guns, which might offer diminishing returns, could be seen as a misalignment of priorities. Ultimately, the debate over large guns on aircraft carriers only adds to the broader challenges of modern defense budgeting. Balancing cutting-edge capabilities with fiscal responsibility is a daunting task for military planners. While large-caliber guns might still hold limited utility in specific scenarios, such as shore bombardment, their overall relevance appears to be diminishing. The opportunity cost of continuing to invest in these legacy systems deserves careful scrutiny in an area of unpredictable threats and fast-evolving technologies. Wouldn't you agree? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Rapid-Fire Cannons While the era of aircraft carriers bristling with battleship-sized guns have passed, these floating fortresses are far from defenseless. The focus may have shifted to missiles and advanced air defense systems, but modern carriers retain a last line of defense. Smaller, specialized guns designed for point defense. These rapid-fire cannons ranging from 20mm to 57mm in caliber, and sometimes even integrated missile systems, are the carrier's final shield against threats that slip past its long-range defenses. Picture this. A supersonic anti-ship missile, honed to defeat a carrier's outer defense layers, streaks in low and fast. The carrier's escort ships and its own primary missile defense systems have failed. Suddenly, the point defense guns erupt in a cacophony of fire. These weapons spit out a furious torrent of projectiles, creating a near impenetrable wall of metal. Their advanced targeting systems ensure pinpoint accuracy, even against targets moving at incredible speeds. This is close quarters combat in the extreme and a scenario where the high rate of fire is essential. These guns can also engage smaller, faster moving threats like attack boats providing an additional layer of protection. Unlike their bulky predecessors, point defense guns are compact and carefully integrated into the carrier's design to minimize their impact on flight operations. They are the last resort, the final guardians of the carrier. They represent an evolution of naval gunnery being smaller, faster, and more precise. While the primary defense of a modern carrier task force relies on missiles, sensor networks, and its own air wing, these specialized point defense guns offer a critical failsafe. They ensure that even if other defensive layers are breached, the aircraft carrier, the core of the task force, has one last shot at survival. This is its multi-layered approach that keeps these powerful symbols of naval might safe in an ever-evolving world of maritime threats. 
projection and deterrence. Beyond their immediate defensive role, guns aboard modern aircraft carriers continue to serve an important purpose in power projection and deterrence. The arrival of a carrier strike group within a region sends a powerful message to potential adversaries. It acts as a tangible symbol of a nation's military reach, technological sophistication, and unwavering resolve. While the ship's primary striking power lies in its aircraft, the presence of guns on deck adds a further dimension to this formidable display. Imagine the visual impact of a massive carrier adorned with a mix of advanced aircraft and sleek gun systems. It's more than just raw firepower, it's a carefully orchestrated display of capabilities. The guns convey a sense of self-sufficiency and versatility. They hint at an ability to engage a wide range of threats across different scales of a potential conflict. Even if the carrier's aircraft and missiles take center stage in combat, the guns underscore that the ship is ready for any type of engagement. This multifaceted image of power serves as a deterrent in itself. Potential adversaries are more likely to hesitate before escalating tensions when faced with such a visible manifestation of military strength. The guns on a carrier, while potentially less pivotal than its aircraft in direct combat, become a crucial piece of the psychological chess game that is modern deterrence. They're part of the image the carrier presents, one of overwhelming power that a nation can deploy far from its shores. Of course, in the world of power projection, perception matters. The presence of guns strengthens the carrier's imposing image. They reinforce the message that, even without its air wing, the carrier is far from a defenseless target, making an attack a costly and risky proposition for any adversary. So as technology continues to evolve, it'll be interesting to see how the role of guns on aircraft carriers may change in the future. Are you as excited as we are? Let us know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos that we made, Click on the one on the screen and take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.